He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's only worked there 15 bloody years. 15 years or 500 years, mate. He doesn't know. What he's he knows that machine. He knows how to work. He knows anything. Now, look, look, you look through a vacuum mould at that temperature. You, you, you want to buy a book? No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> you can do that with that machine. He knows the thing. No. You want some incense? No. <laughs> you can do it. It's the wrong flange size. How about They're some beads? No. You know what's wrong with you blokes is that you haven't opened up to your P-D-E-L-E-F. Listen, you can do that with that machine. Your potential that. divine energy love flow. No, not like that. That shines within us all. No. Yeah, what's wrong with you blokes is that you don't know who you really are. We know who we are. It's on our pockets. <laughs> yeah. Well, then I reckon it's about time you bought a book and got some love energy flowing, right? Do you really? Yeah, I do. Oh, do you? You tell me why then. Yeah, I'll tell you why. Why? I'll tell you why, because the Swami Daha Ruptu Siri Makadaka Jr. the <laughs> third has shown me how to use the love energy within me and I'm in control of it. Yeah? Yeah. No I'm very happy. Yeah, I can you. concentrate my energy force within me and direct it wherever and whenever I like. Yeah. And I can drink more piss than you. Because <laughs> I have mastered the ancient art of gullet widening, see? I open up my throat real wide to the godhead, see? And I can knock back a beer faster than anyone in this pub, see? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can control the rate at which the alcohol enters my bloodstream. So that I can be pissed one moment, see? And then... Sober the next, just like that, see? You're all bloody talk. You are just a speck of dust. You are an infinitesimal speck of dust in the entire cosmos. Oh, you couldn't get in touch with yourself with a 40-foot pole. Look at you. Take a forklift truck to raise your consciousness. Just weak as dysentery, both of you. Shiva, I could meditate you both under the table with me third eye behind me back. <laughs> Every mama, every rama, giant rama. <laughs> you know how to handle those fellas, Blake? Ah, oh, yeah, they're all the same. They got a little spot behind their left ear hole where the energy flow from the heart meets that a divine, eternal soul force going the opposite way. Now you get them in a half lotus leg lock, and before you can say George Harrison, bingo, instant nirvana. Works every time. <laughs> Same again, boys? Yeah, too yeah, right. <laughs> no, it wasn't too right. It's the wrong size flange. You I can use it. Brain space. Hi, um, I'm Debbie Wilson. And I'm Tim Muktananda, and we'd like to share something with you that's really <laughs> crucial for your cerebral and spiritual and physical well-being. Excellent. Um, like, I know this really amazing guy called Barry. Barry, I know, you know Barry too. I know Barry's. you know. <laughs> Barry's an amazing guy. What Barry's doing, right, is he's um, conducting these whole earth, back to the wilderness, bush workshops, <laughs> in which he gets this group of a really aware, committed individuals. He drives them out into the wilderness and just leaves them there. <laughs> and, uh, and, it, and he only charges $200. Which is just amazing. Amazing. Well, I know. Excellent. Like, um, what I was going to say, right, right, was that um, bulk eons ago in right. the olden days, right, right, there was this amazing poet, which I don't know if you know, his know, name I was know. William Wordsworth. <laughs> William Wordsworth, um, I know. Right. And Bill um, got a real charge from nature, right? Like, right. he wrote this really amazing poem. Um, which was about this really incredible, aware, isolated, superior sort of cloud. That just floated that's the one, on high. That's the one. Just that's floated that's on that's high that's over that's hills that's and vales. And, and or, 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 or floated on high over excellent. hills and vales. Or and just spontaneously precipitating. You know, didn't follow the dictates of the Weather Bureau, right? And just, <laughs> Spontaneously right. precipitated on flowers, trees, right. lampposts, etc., etc. I mean, oh, I just had a flash to be. Well, what was it? It could have been <laughs> the cloud that precipitated on us during that storm. Wasn't that oh. storm amazing? That, um, <laughs> that, storm that was, was the most 
excellent it's storm. Excellent storm. Somehow been... the bush rain is a lot wetter than city rain, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really wet. Yeah. Like, um, I was really blissed out when right. our tent blew away. Excellent. <laughs> because, like, Otherwise, we would never have known just how wet we could actually get. Right. I don't think I've personally been as wet as I was in. You haven't. Right. You haven't. You right. haven't. And then when you just sort of disappeared, oh, I thought, wow, wow you know, some lightning bolt must have spontaneously combusted Debbie. <laughs> which would have been a real flash, you know. For I mean, both of us. Right. right. But, right. but then I looked down the bottom of this really steep, heavy, precipitous and sort of gorge. With all know. these... Amazing gravity vibes. Hippie. Hippie. <laughs> and you were just sort of lying at the bottom, and wow. um, and the look on your face just reminded me of the Sleeping Buddha at the Tiger Balm Gardens when I went to Singapore. You know, except except for the blood. You right. know. <laughs> right. Um, like the reason right. that I was looking like the Buddha, etc., etc., right. et right. was um, that I had been brought to a state of new awareness of Excellent. my body. Right. Right. <laughs> Like, my ribs had been brought closer together. Excellent. Excellent. And my limbs had spontaneously relocated themselves. Yeah. And I just bled without even having to think about it. You know, um, the bleeding's an excellent way of eliminating know, toxins from your body. Um, and, like, then I became completely at one with the natural world. Right. Um, right. All moving on the same mandala when all these really amazing insects came to share my experience. Right. <laughs> because your wound was a really open I wound, I know. Right? It was just and an open, open. wound. And, I know. And, like, when the kookaburra started laughing, it was oh, incredible, right. you know. It was It was, it was like a, an extraordinary scene from a film by Warthog. Right. You know? <laughs> like, right. It was like a comment, you I know. know. I know. Like, um, I was just really, really angry when the right. air search and rescue squad winched oh. me out. <laughs> like, I mean, why couldn't they leave me there so that my own restorative um, forces Healing of my body process. could get myself back together again? Right, right. I, just... I mean, the air search and rescue squad are a bunch of fascists, you know. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I tried to stop them, right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, excellent. Um, what Tim and I are trying to say is that we really insist that if you value your mental and physical well-being at we'll all, be um, you contact us to contact um, um, Barry, Barry, right, for right. one of these amazing workshops. Right, right. And leaves these saunas, jacuzzis and spas to those with an Olivia Newton-John Travolta mentality. Right. Chick you later. Chick making cheap commercials because on, they're cheaper, cheaper to make. <laughs> Sometimes, Ken, I think I was born in the wrong century. So do I. So do I. But even here at Dodgy Brothers, we sometimes have our problems. Money worries, the hassles of big business. Problems of a personal nature, Ken. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> here at Dodgy Tronics Science Laboratories, we're working to move you into the 21st century. century. With the Dodgy Tronics Cold Storage Family Freeze Unit to freeze you and your problems for a better day tomorrow. So come down today and leave all your yesterdays until tomorrow. Tomorrow's <laughs> money. Your money is our future. Just two dollars gets you started. Simply set. And forget! <laughs> Remember our dodgy guarantee. Yeah. If in 5,000 years you have a defrosted, that's money back. Go dodgy. Live yeah. in the dodgy world. There I was, Beatrice and Milk at Milk Pond, about to enter the home of Mario Tuazzo, the brooding builder, and his exotic pottery South American Italian stepmother, the Contessa. Could I save Uncle Taddy and prove to them that blood is thicker than mortar? Stop it, Extra! Here is Mario's the woman. Mario's the woman. You English are too thin. Eh, calm. Eh. Regulate, darling. Ah! <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll recognise the mocking laugh of Victoria Barracks, the famous actress who had been on the Parkinson show seven times. What are you, little fool? I don't you notice we're just the hoes of the concrete? <laughs> To us, every part of his work, Roman body mocked me. Ah, Beatrice, welcome to my inferno. What could he want of me? <laughs> This Beatrice Milpond. I know! And this Victoria Barrack, my cousin six times removed, but she keeps coming back. <laughs> and this Lorenzo, my half-brother. What's the doing in the quarter, horses? He always have the chip on the shoulder. No, no, no! Ah! <laughs> There is one way to save your uncle's little church. Marry me. I'm, I'm frightfully sorry. I'll buy you another one. There is another one! It was a priceless piece of bondonieri. The mother of heaven horses with the thermometer in its underbelly. You breaker, you pie! What do you mean? You must marry my Mario. That is the terrazzo wife. No, I will never marry Mario. What is so terrible about me that makes me unacceptable to you? Am I so repulsive? I have feelings, gold feelings. <laughs> More than you ever dream of. Or perhaps you want that your uncle dies of a broken heart. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose I'll just have to. <laughs> my cheeks burned as the mocking laughter rang in my ears. I ran as if pursued by a flock of Hitchcockian mockingbirds and sank into the mock flock velvet chaise lounge, feeling wretched, rejected, and completely, utterly mocked. <laughs> Where was the knight in shining armor who, according to romantic tradition, should have been here ten minutes ago? Sorry, I'm late. There was a restless look in those searching blue eyes. How are you going, mate? This is my fiance. And this is a Studley Park, the famous plastic surf. <laughs> Haven't spotted a set of keys anywhere, my dear. After only two and a half hours in Australia, I was already engaged against my will to a man I could never love and in love with a man I could never marry. <coughs> Where was my life leading me? Summer is gone, but I feel fine. Chunky girl is on my mind. Ooh, she gets what she takes when she gets me custard. Chunky custard. Life without custard can be blue. Chunky custard, I'm stacking in you. It's a love, it's a funky, it's a chunky custard. Well, things are bad and getting worse. You can see it on the faces of the people passing by. But whose fault is it? Let's ask the uninformed man in the street. Oh, excuse me, um, who do you blame? Well, I don't think it's a matter of blame as such. Well, that man over there blamed you. <laughs> he blamed you? Yes. He said it was all your fault. 
he said that the world would be a better place without you in it. And he also said something about your mother and an unhygienic Eskimo kayak. Oh, he did. Did he? <laughs> Okay, that'll do for that story. We'll do the second one now. Well, white collar violence is on the increase. You can see it in the faces of the people in the street. Right? Clean your brother's footy boots. Do I have to? Of course you do. Not fair. What's not fair, Glenda, love? You only care about Greg. You don't care about me. Well, dear, you're only a girl. <laughs> Gregory, get out of the gully trap. <laughs> you too, Beverly. <laughs> Tom. You'd better talk to Gregory before Val's Bev gets him into trouble. I'm busy, Bubbles. You do it. Oh, no, it's your turn. I took him to the father and son night. <laughs> Beverly, put Greg down. I'll do something, Tom. <laughs> Greg? You've got to be cruel to be nasty. <laughs> A boy needs to know these things. Thanks, Tom. Mum! Dad threw my brick at Greg! That brick was the best toy we ever gave, Glenda. <laughs> if you broke it, I... got it from me, that's for sure. Uh, excuse me. Linda. Hello, Mum. Hello, How are you? Roddy. Uh, Dad. How are things, son? Dad? This time I just came to borrow some bread, if that's OK. Here I have a recently unopened loaf of bread. Now, I'd like, um... Well, you, the one on the diet. I'd like you to pick a slice of white Vienna. Any slice of white Vienna. Go on, pick a slice of white Vienna. Pick a... So you're not going to be in it, are you? You know, I could, uh, I could stand here all night doing this and he'd never, ever pick a slice of white Vienna. And do you know why? Because he's deaf. Can't hear a word I'm saying. Can you, Ludwig? Deaf as a dodo. And do you know why he's deaf? Because he's Beethoven, the great composer. Of course, he won't have a bar of music now. <laughs> won't have a bar of music now, get it? Bar of music, won't have a bar. Now, listen, if I've got to explain every sophisticated witticism, <laughs> we'll be here all night. Now, Beethoven was born in 1770, and as a result of that, he's dead. But <laughs> before, before, before he died, Beethoven looked like... <laughs> I've done about... <laughs> No, only joking. I bet they went white in the ABC legal department then. <laughs> um, be before, come on, before he died, Beethoven looked like this. And before he looked like this, he looked like this. Isn't he beautiful? <laughs> and somewhere between there and there, Beethoven wrote some of the world's great music. Every tune and evergreen. Look at this, he got this badge here for best first year composer. This one, this one here is for best sonata. This is for best fifth symphony. Best, fifth, best piano concert. He won a lot of, oh look, incidentally, uh, for anybody with a maternal turn of mind, uh, this baby photo is from the, uh, the woman's, <gasps> Lady die. <laughs> oh, no, it's just I can't stand it. I mean, the woman's on the cover of every magazine in the non-communist world. I mean, what's she ever done? 
I mean, she comes out here with hubby. And what do they do? They open things. They open things like fridges and champagne. <laughs> and they smile a lot and shake hands. I mean, they're nothing more than royal Ronald McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> Prince, Prince William, the future King of England, their boy Bill, have you seen him? He's a baby. <laughs> a baby. I mean, how can they tell if a baby is going to be a good king? Well, look, I've got friends. So I'm one of the lucky ones. <laughs> I've got friends and they've got a baby and I'm no judge of horse flesh, but this baby looks to me like he could shape up to be a pretty good king. That's the trouble with the monarchy. I mean, how do you know you're getting the best king for the job? Now, if I sound bitter and twisted about this, it's because I am the real Prince Charles. No, no, no. Now, I haven't told people this before, but See, we were actually, Charles and I were born on the same day in 1948, and if that isn't coincidence enough, even now, we're still the same age. <laughs> my, um, my hospital records, which were destroyed in a fire tomorrow, um, <laughs> clearly show that there was a Mrs Windsor who had a baby in the same ward as my mother, and that baby was a boy. Now, I have a statutory declaration from the night nurse which clearly shows that she feels that she could have, in her drunken stupor... Um... <laughs> oh, look at... Hey, 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 hey. Well, listen, I lost the stat deck, but this is, this is the big news. Tonight we start the new Beat the Champ competition. I'm actually the champ. And our first contestant in Beat the Champ tonight is Senator John Button of Canberra. And he's coming in. So, listen, uh, Senator John, if you'd like to come in now to play Beat the Champ, Incidentally, if Senator John does, in fact, beat the champ, he will win the ABC. <laughs> OK, so we're ready to go now, Senator John. And please, after you. OK, you, fine, OK. You, well, you're a politician. This shouldn't be too hard. Uh, hello, hello, Johnny. And... There it is! I won! I beat a politician! I beat Senator John Button! Once again, the ABC is saved from undue influence! Hooray! Come on, Jack, get in! Come on, get on! Get on! Jack, get in! Come on! Now, could you move from this area, thanks, please? There you go. Not oh, bad, oh well, thanks, yeah. Don't you, Russell, get back. Get up, get up. Could you clear the uh, platform, thanks, you if you don't mind? Thank you very much. Good. good. Oh, well, <laughs> yes. Yes, there it is go. a bit wet, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, Hang nice on. Um, you. Sorry on, to do this back, to Russell. you. Come on. Perhaps if you go off that way. Nice to see you. Sorry. Excuse me. Jack, get up. Go on, go on. What are you doing? What are you doing? Get up here. Get up. Bill. Stay. Here you go. Here you go. Good afternoon, delegates. We've called you all here today. You know why we've called you here? Jack, stay out of this. Stay. Now, uh, we've gathered you all here today. Uh, here you go. Here you go. Might give you his wish. Jack, look. I'll handle this. All right? Heel. Now, uh, things are looking a bit crook. Crook, yeah, crook, real crook. That's why we've gathered yous, yous from all over the station for this <laughs> summit conference. Summit conference. There you go. There now, you go. I know a lot of yous are fly-blown at the moment. <laughs> Not much of a mood for consensus. But some of yous, no names mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> Don't try and change the subject. Yeah, have been dropping your bundle. Yeah. Too many gags and not enough bags. You're going to lift your game. Talk to one another. You're going to work together in a spirit of consensus. Right, that's right, Jack. What are you looking at, eh? What are you looking hey, at? Hey, 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 you, hey, 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 hey. What do you got there? No. Drop it. Only it, Russell. No. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Yeah, eh? Yeah. Hey, where's your bun? Come on. Where's your bone? Eh? 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 What's this? Your bone? Eh? No, no, stay. Alright, <laughs> you can have it. I got it, Jack. 
Good. It was just yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, there's another one. No. Sit, sit, sit. OK, get the boat. Get the boat. I've got it. Thank you very much. Where are you going, Jack? I don't know. Oh, good. I'll come with you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.